The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the X-Zone comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern right here live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network and our fine family of broadcast affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, 20 Asian countries, and now throughout the European Union. The rest of the world on TalkStarRadio.com, streaming audio. And my producer tonight at Master Control is the one and only Superman. Hey, Superman, nice working with you again tonight. If you'd like to give us a call tonight, our toll-free numbers are one 877 Now, that's toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii at one 877 My email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our two websites, www.xzoneradio.com. And to watch and listen to the X-Zone, no matter where you are around the world, live from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, www.xzonetv.com. On tonight's show, I have Dr. Jason Rand. He's going to be joining me in a few minutes. We're going to be talking about the strange weather patterns that are affecting the world. Major Kevin Randall will be joining me in hour number two. We are going to be talking about the Stephenville UFO. Hour number three... Ruth Hoskin is going to join me. We're going to be talking about dream incubation. And in hour number four, we have David Campione from SpaciousSky.com joining us to talk about more UFOs. I had invited uh, Angelina Joyner from the Stephenville Examiner Tribune to join us tonight. Earlier this hour, I sent her an email Saturday. No reply. I sent her a fax earlier this morning after we got off air. And I received a call from her this uh, later on this morning, and uh, she declined to come on the show. We had also saw, uh, sent an email and fax to Julie Danley, the president of the Stephenville Chamber of Commerce. We did not hear a reply back from her. Over 300 emails had been sent to members of the Stephenville Chamber of Commerce, asking them how the... Uh, sighting of the UFO on January the 8th has affected their business. Not one reply. We had also sent emails to MUFON headquarters, as well as to Ken Cherry, the Texas director of MUFON, inviting them to come on the show. We haven't heard a word from them since. Maybe everybody got abducted. Maybe the aliens came back and decided that since they caused such a big hoopla, they were going to take them to whatever planet they think they came from. If you go to www.exxone-radio.com or exxoneradio.com, we have a link to an article that I wrote this afternoon called Wake Up Ufology. And if you go to that link, there is a YouTube video that has been circulating on the Internet. Apparently... Allegedly, the Stephenville UFO. Well, after looking at this so-called UFO, and I always listen to the audio track. Now, if I was looking at an audio, uh, at a UFO, I would be excited and I would be giving some kind of description of what I am seeing. Well, there is no talking on this audio track. Plus, the UFO itself, are you ready for this? Has navigational lights. Now, 
and I'm talking about the blinking light on top and the blinking light on the bottom of the craft. Uh, unless the FAA has jurisdiction outside of this planet and the other uh, the other governing bodies have jurisdiction outside this planet, why in the name of heaven would a UFO number one be brightly lit up and have navigational lights? These are a couple of the questions I'm going to be asking uh, tonight to the various UFO people that we have coming on. But when we come back from this two-minute commercial break, Dr. Jason Rand joins me. We're going to be talking about the strange weather patterns on this planet right here in the X-Zone on the Talk Star Radio Network. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Dr. Jason Rand is our very special guest of this hour, and we're going to be talking about the strange, weird, bizarre weather that is plaguing this planet at this time. This is an article that was released by the Associated Press earlier this afternoon. Winds cold ice over Midwest head northwest. Flights disrupted. Power lines toppled across swath of country. Chicago, Lake Erie surged over its eastern shore Wednesday, adding flooding to the headaches delivered by a windy storm. Um, let me see. Windy storm that tipped tractor tailor, uh, trailers, disrupted flights, and toppled trees and power lines across a wide swath of the nation. A cold front and Arctic air roared into New York before dawn, sending Tuesday's spring-like temperatures plummeting. Buffalo went from 53 degrees at 3 a.m. Wednesday to 15 degrees by noon. Classes were canceled at most schools. High winds were suspected of collapsing a scaffold at a Brooklyn building that killed a construction worker and seriously injured another Wednesday morning. In northern Ohio, a train traveling in high winds derailed on a bridge over Sandusky Bay around 4 a.m., sending 10 freight cars into the water, said Ottawa County Sheriff Robert Bratton. No injuries were reported. 
Authorities on Tuesdays rescued five people camping in a van near Elkton, Oregon, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office said. They had planned to leave Sunday but were trapped by the snow. With supplies dwindled, one man hiked to find cell phone service and contacted relatives in Tacoma, Washington, who notified authorities. In Washington State, an avalanche forced the closure of the westbound lane of snowy Interstate 90, the state's main east-west thoroughfare. That happened just hours after the road was reopened following its longest weather closure since 2002. And the report goes on and on. And this kind of weather has been affecting and plaguing the world, not only in North America, but also in China. And here to help us try and put some sense to the weather is Dr. And Hey, Dr. How are you? Good evening, my friend. And hello, everybody. So tell me, what is your take on this strange weather that's plaguing the world? Well, um, actually, as you know, we've been talking about this, you and I, mm-hmm probably for the last several months, but even as we're talking about the subject, which is the primary point of, of the book that we have called Return of Planet X, it's simply the fact that the Earth is now in the midst of its beginning throes, its beginning regurgitations of getting ready to go through a major possible pole shift. Everything is going to become more unstable as We approach 2009 and 2012. Now, mind you, this is part of my hypothesis developed after Mm -hmm. spending six years writing the book. And what we're seeing is actually the dramatic effects of what happens when Mother Nature becomes uncontrollable. It's it's happening all over the world. It would be different, Rob, if it was just the United States. Right. Not Not that we don't, not that we're not, not, it's not that we're not carrying a heavy burden with bad weather. It's that we're not the only ones. It's happening all over the world. Okay? Uh, but, what, well, let's talk about what happened in the Mideast over the last 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Are you aware that they had 11 inches of snow in Jerusalem? Some wow. people, Some people had never, ever in their entire lives had lived in the Gaza area all throughout Israel and Lebanon and Syria had never, ever, ever experienced snow. Well, they are in, they were just shortly, uh, 24 hours ago, in the midst of a blizzard like condition that shut down shipping and roads and mm-hmm. commerce and trade. It l- largely shut these countries down. Part of it was because they were in shock and surprise of never having to have dealt with wintry, icy snow conditions, but more so because everything stopped. You know, the malice, the fighting, everything just stopped. And isn't it interesting that there were no reports of any atrocities of any kind? So did Mother Nature, in fact, come in there and quiet things down? Would not that be an interesting way to approach what happened with this or unbelievable it... change of weather in the Middle mm-hmm. East? It actually shut things down for a while. And is then, that a bad thing? I don't think so. And then it was snowing in Baghdad uh, two weeks yes, ago. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So what we're saying, Rob, is simply that all we have to do is keep watching the signs and, and standing by, kind of doing nothing as things deteriorate more and more, or with your help and programs such as this and, and books like ours that is now uh, uh, becoming widely, uh, by the way, it's a word-of-mouth book now, and I thank everyone for that. We, we ask that you pass it on, if you have it, to your friends, your associates, your business friends. It's information to be shared. But back to the point of the weather. We've talked about this before, and we are going to start to see a greater escalation of even worse storms and worse hurricanes and worse firestorms and more melting of the Earth's ice. Now, I'm concerned talking about the Earth's ice, that if we keep losing the ice from the northern, uh, um, of the North Pole, the northern area of the planet, um, I'm afraid that it could maybe cause more instability in the rotation principles of the planet. That's, That's a big one to gulp, but consider that it would change the dynamics of the weight structure of the planet if a lot of that ice disappeared. And it would also, of course change the amount of fresh water going into the oceans and therefore affect 
the salinization principles and and the disruption of the flow and and the patterns of the currents in other words it goes on and on and on and a lot of these subjects rob were covered in in the movie um the day after tomorrow remember they talked about all that I sure that was, do. That was a great educational movie, as far as I was concerned. Yeah, it was. It was brilliantly done. It was brilliantly done, and most of the facts were correct. The, of course, the reality was that it it happened way too fast in terms of real time, and it happened in terms of hours and days and weeks, yeah. as as compared to reality. At this point, according to our understanding of of Earthian dynamics, okay. So, what I'd like to do is this. I think that as part of our Project Blue Light uh, organization, and, and there's a few things that I'd like to announce about that if we, if we could at some point, mm-hmm. um, I think that we ought to make a division of our Blue Light organization devoted to actually the subject of Earth changes. We should be tracking these major Earth changes. So what I'd like to do is, is have someone out there help us put together, and we would be very happy to accept their input if they could help us put together some kind of a of a of a uh, a blog or some some kind of a reporting station where they can start collecting major catastrophic storms or disasters. In other words, track them on a day to day, twenty four hour, um, seven days a week basis, so we can get a feel whether there is an escalation going on or whether it's not an escalation or whether it's something that is just slowly continuing to build. Well, you know what? I was talking to a scientist earlier this afternoon, and the scientific community is saying that this is just a normal cycle that the Earth is going through. It is nothing that we, you know, the uh, the CO2 emissions and global warming certainly have have. Uh, are having its effects on the climate. They're not denying that, but they're saying that if you look at the Earth's history, this is not the first time that the Earth has basically started to cure itself, to rid itself of the of the uh, disease on its surface called mankind. Okay, let's go. T- I agree. Let us let us go totally forward with that premise. Mm-hmm. I'm in 100% agreement with it. However, there is another dimension to that equation that that theory or thesis is only a part of. And the second half of it is this, that there is an undue reason, and it is an escalated principle, that all of these changes are actually happening way too fast on too much of, a, of, an, of an affirmative schedule for Mother Nature just to be going through her normal cycle. There is something that is causing an agitation of all of these elements. And what I've been trying to tell you was that we believe that what's affecting the Earth comes from, of course, the interior of the Earth, and that is its internal structure and, and how its lifeblood system, the, the magma, works. And when it's irritated and the volcanoes start to erupt, whether they're above the ground or mm-hmm. underneath the sea, and therein, my friend and our dear audience, is the fact that I believe that the huge movement of the ocean's currents and the fact that they're warming at such an alarming rate, causing disruption around the planet, is because there are an inordinate number of brand new baby um, plateau-type underwater volcanic systems that are now beginning to either vent or flow lava. They don't all necessarily have to blow their tops. And when that happens, you heat up all the water. Imagine a volcano the size of Mauna Loa. Do you have any idea how huge that volcano actually is? By some standards, it's considered to be actually the biggest, largest, fattest, tallest, widest volcano in the world. If you took its height from its bottom root on the floor of the ocean to its very top, it's about 34,000 some 900 feet uh, higher than than, um, Mount Everest. That's pretty staggering when when you can think of it that way. And it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles around its base of circumference. 
All right, stand by, Dr. Rand. We've got to take our commercial break at the bottom of the hour. Dr. Jason Rand is our guest, www.returnofplanet-x.com. By the way, Exxon Nation, check out projectbluelight.net. www.projectbluebook.net. I believe it's net. Yeah. 1-877-528-8255 one 877 is our toll-free number. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network. Still to come on tonight's show, Kevin Randall. Uh, let me see, Ruth Hoskins and David Campione. The Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, will return on the other side of this commercial break as we continue live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to the X-Zone. My name is Rob McConnell. Dr. Jason Rand is our special guest of this hour, www.returnofplanet-x.com. Before we get back to the good doctor, on this date... In history, on this date in 1847, the California town of Yerba Benuina is renamed San Francisco. In 1933, the Lone Ranger debuted on radio, of course, by himself. On this date in 1958, the very first two-way moving sidewalk debuted in Dallas. And also today is Wilmer uh, Wilmer, uh, Vanderama turns 28. Mimi Rogers, the first Mrs. Tom Cruise, turns 52. Now who's crazy? Uh, Let me see. Phil Collins celebrates his 57th birthday today. Vice President Dick Cheney turns 67 today. And no, no one did buy him a gun. And Gene Hackman turns 78 today. Uh, Remember him? He played uh, Popeye Doyle as well as Lex Luthor in uh, the first four Superman movies, I believe. And today is National Toilet Day. I'm not going to go anywhere with that one. I'll just leave that one alone. Let me see. Also, uh, today, Rudy Giuliani and uh, John Edwards uh, left the presidential nomination race. Uh, and here here are the top five movies coming out about the presidential campaign. Number one is Throw Obama from the Train. Number two is The McCain Mutiny. Number three, The Hillary's Have Eyes. Number two, Mitt Could Happen to You. And number five, the documentary on John Edwards' uh, campaign, Untraceable. That's today in the news and birthdays around the world. Also, uh, there are um, a new list came out from Amazon.com. They listed the 20 most romantic cities in the U.S. They include Alexandria, Virginia, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Miami, Florida, Irvine, California, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Orlando, Florida, Berkeley, California, Scottsdale, Arizona, Arlington, Virginia, Atlanta, Georgia, Washington, D.C., Pasadena, California, Bellevue, Washington, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, California, Columbia, South Carolina, Tallahassee, Florida, Austin, Texas, Richmond, Virginia, and Knoxville, Tennessee. So there you go. A little bit of uh, information, news, and trivia here on the X-Zone. Dr. Jason Rand is our special guest. We're talking about the strange weather patterns that uh, just seem to be 
going from one end of the world to the other. And uh, the other day I was watching the news channel, and they were showing that storm that was just hovering over the uh, west coast. And it just looked horrendous. They were getting everything over there. And somebody over the... Over the uh, last break with the news, sent me an email asking, is it possible that this is actual a weather manipulation technology that's being tested out? And what are your comments on that, Dr. Rand? Wow. Well, if you had, if you had, actually had the technology or the power or the skill or the funds to create a system such as that, mm -hmm. I guess it would be considered a very powerful weapon. But I do not believe that it is possible to create any kind of an artificial device that could possibly match celestial dynamics that go on, okay? I mean, it's way beyond us. I believe that our planet and our solar system is traveling in this unbelievable path through space, and we are now possibly getting ready to cross the galactic plane, and it's, it's something, a new theory I'm working on with a, with a colleague of mine. We're, we're, we're going to do a, a, a special article for the uh, Chronicle, for the X Chronicles on it, mm -hmm. um, we're actually going through a, and we believe we're heading toward some kind of electromagnetic as well as a dimensional shift of either physical proportions or or some kind of cosmic force, and or possibly both. And that's where I think Planet X might come into this equation. If we do go through this this galactic plane. Mm -hmm. We might be crossing from what I'm, what we think might be a positive charge in this part of the of the of the galaxy to a negative charge, and if so, it would go against the opposition of the planet because we believe that we are we have a positive pole charge. Now, if this was to happen, that would be the end of mankind. No, not necessarily. It would just throw everything in reverse. All oh, right, none of the, uh, the and it might listen, and it might even affect time. How's that? Whoa! Imagine if the shift. You know, it it, it may not be a totally physical thing. Mm -hmm. It may be a consciousness rising. It may be some some kind of a power surge coming from the sun through us. There's going to be change. That's what the Mayans have called the end of time. That's why the it's it's so interesting that the uh, Mayan calendar calendar appears to end just around uh, December 21st, 2012, somewhere in that vicinity. Now, something must be going on, and this is what we talk about in the book, all right? In fact, this whole story can be learned from the book. We go into, de into de detail for it. Now, where we left our conversation off was the fact that I was hypothecating that I believe that the oceans are being warmed by a steady increase and, 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 and the huge prominence of undersea volcanoes heating up the ocean's floors for hundreds and thousands of miles, thus affecting the currents. Now, if we're right, we have to figure out why these new volcanoes are erupting, what's causing them. You trace, you go, you, you isolate the problem, and then I think we have to back up, and then we have to investigate it walking backwards to figure out why it occurred once we realize what the problem is. It's just like any other mathematical problem mm -hmm. or any medical problem. You start with the with the obvious symptom, and then you figure out, you know, what caused the wound, and then you go back and try to figure out how to fix it. Okay, and I'm saying that the center of the Earth, the Earth's core, is is under excitement, and the Earth is now being affected by a sun which seems to have tripped its normal sequencing. It, we just we, we were supposed to be coming out of a solar max, or we, we actually appear to be going back into one, and it appears that we will hit it around 2012. I think it's a freak. I can't really explain it. I've been picking up on it on the internet. All right, if we're right, then there is a link between all of the crazy weather that we're experiencing right now, right in this country, with the ice and the snow in the in the Chicago. 21 degrees below zero. But that's normal for Chicago at this time of year. No, this is way, way too severe. According, this, according this, to the U.S. Weather is, Bureau. This is a severe cold snap. This All is right. not just a, but this it's is not, just not the sneeze. But it's not, un, it's not abnormal for this to happen at this time of year in Chicago. It's 
not abnormal, but they're coming one after another after another. You're missing the frequency point, and you're missing the intensity. They're not, they're not nice. They're nasty storms, and they're getting worse and worse. Uh, is it they're getting worse and worse, or are we returning to the way it used to be? No. no. Well, yeah, we might be going back to what it used to be, but no, I'm because trying I to remember to establish, I'm trying to get you to relent to the fact that there's change going on. Well, sure there's change, but the world is always changing. It never stays the it's same. It's moving way too fast. If you go back and look at the records we covered in the book, in fact, I'm going to do so. May I take a 800 break here? Uh, not right now, no, but keep going. You're on a roll. All right, okay, well, I'll get my 800 in there. All right, here's the deal. What we need to do is figure out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. We're all talking and discussing the wrong thing. They're looking above the surface of the planet. They should be looking below the surface of the planet, as one of, as one, which is one factor which I believe is greatly contributing to the equation of global warming. Now, Al Gore was absolutely right in in alarming and and uh, in actually arming and then alarming us to what we should be cognizant of. So I think he deserves what he got. I really do. Okay, a lot of people make fun of it, but I'm not one of them. Okay, I'm on record. Now it could have been done. The documentary was actually very very brilliant. It could have been done a little bit better, and it could have shaved off any mm -hmm. criticism. But it's not the point. It was effective, and it helped people come aware of what global warming is and the problem that it is. Now, today on WSNBC.com, there is a great article in its, on its uh, homepage. It's called Hurricanes and Warmer Seas Quantified. It's in red. Experts, experts say storms, very surprisingly sensitive to slight temperature increase. To sum the article up, they found out after doing a number of years of research, I'm talking about 100 years of research, that, that, and here's this, this scientist calculated that for just one single degree of a Fahrenheit increase in the temperature of the ocean would cause this. In other words, if it was at a certain degree but it went up that year by one degree, here's what would happen. Overall hurricane activity would increase. A combination of frequency and hurricane strength increase estimated 49%. Bullet two, the number of intense hurricanes with winds over 110, 110 miles per hour increases by 45%. Fourth bullet, the number of hurricanes of any size actually increases 36%. And the last one is rough. The total number of tropical storms increases by 31%. Imagine if you were to suddenly get a two-degree increase. The numbers would probably double or triple. But in another report that came out earlier this week, mm -hmm. members of the scientific community were saying the reason why the hurricane season was not as severe as, as anticipated or projected was because of global warming. That could be. But there's something very strange going on, and you, if you take, if you try to take away the legitimate science, like I just gave you, mm -hmm. from from alternative science, you still have the question: Who's right? Something is wrong. Something's wrong right now. Oh, now we know. had a we had a breather last year for hurricanes. We still had a bunch, yeah. but you notice where they struck? They struck Mexico. They sunk. They struck Central, and they struck South America. All right. Hold on, Dr. Rand. Um, first of all, Dr. Rand's toll-free number is 1-800-247-6553. That's 1-800-247-6553. Let's go to our phones. We have Donna in Ottawa, who is the winner of the Name the Project, uh, joining us now. Hi, Donna. Good evening, fellas. How Hello, are you? Donna. Congratulations. Thank you. I just wanted to touch base and said it's an honor to be part of it. Oh, listen, did you get your book? We sent it out. Not yet. Maybe All right. I understand it's coming mail. through I'm customs. I'm anticipating and looking forward to it. Well, we signed it. We signed it to you, and we love you, and we love your work. Well, it was really fun. It was a good brain-stretching exercise, and I loved every minute. Oh, super, Donna. So, how do you feel that uh, your name has been chosen uh, to uh, represent the project? Oh, I'm very proud. And what name was it again, Donna? 
Um, I think it was Pace. That's right. That's I submitted, absolutely uh, correct. Quite, quite a few, but I think that was the winning one. That's absolutely. Yes, it was. Absolutely. Yeah. Was well, I tell you what, we uh, we are getting your certificate out to you. I I was waiting for a little frame to come in, and it came in. We have our signed certificate, so you'll be getting that following the book. Well, we'd love to have you come back and tell us how you like the book. Well, I am sure I'm going to enjoy it very, very much. I'm visually impaired. It takes me a while to read. Uh, with a magnifying glass, but I'm sure I'm going to love every moment. I read a lot of your excerpts and have visited your website, so uh, with great anticipation, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, listen, we would like you to have, um, um, I'm going to ask Rob to tell us about the new website that we've just put up for Project Blue Light, so you can check it out, because I just saw it today for the first time myself, and it is absolutely stunning. It's just beautiful to see. So we'd like Anything to share that, that with you too, Donna. Is done with grace and dignity and intelligence and it, it's wonderful. Oh, God love you. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> okay, I appreciate thank you, guys. that, sweetheart. Hey, Donna, thanks, congratulations Donna. and thanks for being part of the Exxon family. Oh, I love being part of the family. Thank you, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye. The book club. Okay, Bye-bye. you've got it. Bye-bye oh, now. Okay, have a good evening. Good night now. Donna's uh, the winner of the uh, Dr. Rand Name the Project contest that we ran, and uh, Donna came up with the name of the project, Project Pace. Now, the website that Dr. Rand was talking about is the Project Blue Light website. It is www.projectbluelight.net. Dr. Rand's uh, toll-free number to order his book is 1-800-247-6553. That's 1-800-247-6553. Okay, Dr. Rand, so what, what do you see next? Now, now you've, been, you've been watching the world. You've been anticipating. You've been studying. What do you see happening next that we can watch out for or be prepared for? Well, I think that we're going to see. It's, it's really very simple. I mean, I could, I could try to give you this real complicated, you know, pseudoscientific uh, uh, system of thought. But let me say this. Things are just going to continue getting worse and worse and worse. And All right. Why don't suddenly, we do this? Why don't we do this? Give me a bit more information when we come back from this commercial break because okay. I've only got about 30 seconds left and I don't want to cut you off midstream like I usually do. Dr. Jason Rand is our special guest, www.returnofplanet-x.com. And you can uh, order your book uh, toll-free at one 800 247-6553. That's 1-800-247-6553. And when Dr. Rand and I come back, he'll give you his email address just in case you'd like to communicate with him directly, ask him any questions, and he does get back to you with very intelligent answers. Dr. Rand and I return on the other side of this break right here on the X-Zone. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. 
Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A Soul Balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Jason Rand is our special guest. His website, www.returnofplanet-x.com. And you can order his book by simply picking up the phone. It's a toll-free number at 1-800-247-6553. That's 1-800-247-6553. Dr. Rand, as always, it's great having you with us this hour. Um, Before we went to the break, I asked you what the next signs would be, and we've got about three minutes. Would you be able to... Tell the the listening audience what we can look forward to. Well, okay, we can we can look for we 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 certainly have to look forward to it because we live we live are living here in the present. But every next moment is our future. So in our future, I'm 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 compelled to say that things are just going to get increasingly worse. The seasons are going to be more erratic. The storms and the damage to property, and there'll be an escalation of what are known as earth changes. And I think that when all the pieces are linked together, they're going to find out that it's a composite of global warming and the fact that our sun is is being uh, being made subject to certain celestial forces and dynamics. Way too complicated for me to even try to discuss on the program, mm-hmm. but suffice to say that our planet and our solar system and our galaxy are in change. There's only one constant in the universe, and that constant is comprised of one word, and it's called change. Change is the only constant in the universe. If the sun was being affected by these, by this, these forces... Wouldn't the Earth and the other planets be affected directly instead of indirectly by the sun? Well, <laughs> all forces that are exerted are exerted from the sun. The sun is the sole central part of the light beat heart and chemistry that keeps the solar system, you know, first of all, revolving together and held together by, by its gravitational forces and laws, mm-hmm. but more importantly... Whatever happens on the sun affects each and every planet and body. I, I understand that, but I think my, my question might have been misunderstood. I'm sorry. If there are forces that are affecting the sun, would those forces not affect the planet Earth directly instead of or as jointly? It, it, it happens in combination, yes, of course. Of course, any subtle cosmic force that sweeps through, through the, the universe of this mm-hmm. part of space will affect every planet and, 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 and every planetary body in it. Right. But it will also exert its own special forces on the sun, so it'll be, it'll be like a two-force whammy. We get, we get the, the forces and the vibrations and the energy sources and surges and collapses from the sun, as well as it affecting us, coming in directly at us through our, through our atmosphere, through space. Yes, of course so. So I think what we're doing is we're entering into a very, very negative, dangerous period of Earth changes. And this has nothing to do with the threat of terrorism and all of the other really nasty problems plaguing this planet. You know, if all I, w- if all I had to worry about was talking to everybody about Earth changes and trying to get our, our planet and our country and our leaders ready for change that's coming, which is what you and I are all about, yeah. I think it's important that people understand Time is of the essence. You can talk, fine. You need to act. You need to read. You need to get out there. You need to ask questions. You need to search the Internet. You need to listen to this show and other shows like it. You need to read. You need to ask questions. All right, Dr. Rand, thanks very much for joining us. You take care. We'll speak to you sure soon you, in the near future. Once again, Dr. Rand's toll-free number is 1-800-247-6553. And his website is www.returnofplanet-x.com. When we come back, Kevin Randall joins me talking about UFOs right here on the X. 